Hey, Megan Rose here, and today I'm going to talk about the effects of recreational drugs on spiritual development. So uh, what I will be reading is from uh, Telos Book 2, Chapter 5, and uh, it's a dialogue with Adama. And uh, I'm probably not the, the best person. I'm not like a professional reader or anything. That said, I just think this is so incredibly valuable for uh, people on the path. And I just, I, I see in a lot of clients and then and just so many people when they're on the spiritual path and then so much of what they talk about in this um in this dialogue relates to what I see uh, spiritually in, in people's aura when they are doing drugs. And so uh, just based on my experience of like what I see when people are engaging in these practices and, and then also their feedback of like, well, I, I feel such connection. And, um, and this really goes into a lot of detail. It's a little long and I figured, well, this is what a great way to get it out to have me read it rather than like you having to read this really long article. Uh, so I hope this is valuable. Uh, you know, wherever you are on the path, it, it's definitely really, I, I think, interesting. And so uh, the drugs that they're going over are uh, marijuana and other narcotics. And then they said that the same principle applies in great measure to all other addictions, such as alcohol and tobacco. Okay, so the conversation or the dialogue starts off like this. So Aurelia says, Adama. Is there a group consciousness attached to the use of an addiction to substances such as marijuana, uh, peyote, or um, as recreational drugs and or spiritual tools? Please describe what effects these substances have on their users. So Adama says, I would like to speak first on the general use of recreational drugs. A little history to begin with, if you will. When these sacred plants originally came forth from creation, they had a wonderful purpose of uplifting energy and consciousness. In the beginning of their use a long time ago, consciousness-altering plants assisted people to open their perception to their divine qualities, to their divine presence and creator. These plants were used also to enhance telepathic abilities, as well as gifts of clairaudience, clairvoyance, and other similar spiritual abilities. These spiritual openings, uh, openings connected people more directly with angelic kingdoms, the nature spirits, and animal kingdoms uh, being from the other side of the veil. The enhanced energies provided by the use of sacred plants also facilitated interdimensional travel. These were the main purposes of these herbal substances, to create spiritual pathways. This is the way it was in the beginning of creation before the fall of consciousness that took place during the fourth golden age. The original sacred plants assisted the spiritual evolution of mankind in the beginning of life on this planet for millions of years, until the fourth golden age. During this long period of earth evolution, people would occasionally draw on the energies of these plants with much reverence, sacredness, and intention. They ate a small portion of a leaf, usually directly from the live plants, according to the experience that was desired. There were a variety of these plants, each one offering its own specific spiritual gift. At no time were the plants misused, nor was the addiction experienced from their use. Children were given a full understanding of their use at a young age, and their intended use was always honored. The sacred plants vibrated at a fifth dimensional frequency and beyond. People did not smoke to inhale these substances through their lungs as is done today. The present day counterparts of these original plants, by the way, are not the same plants at all. Depending on the species, a specific portion of the leaf was required and consumed to attain the desired results. People approached the plants with much reverence, asking permission of the plant devas to partake of the attributes each plant carried. These plants grew abundantly in many places, and almost every home had a sacred spot in the garden reserved for the growth of a small quantity of a few species. They were considered food for the soul, just as important as food for the body. The sacred plants carried a very high vibration. When ingested, they shared attributes of their vibration that elevated the body and opened the consciousness to higher understandings and experiences. The so-called weed that this generation smokes or uses today with the hope of connecting with a higher aspect of themselves or experiencing other dimensional realities are not in any way the same as those originally used for spiritual purposes. The original plants no longer exist in your third dimensional reality. 
although several species have been preserved inside the earth. Incarnated beings practicing the black arts were the first to genetically alter the original plants. To understand what happened with this gift that mankind used freely for so long, it is necessary to go back in history to the beginning of the Dark Ages, when people consistently gave away their power to lesser vibrations other than their own divine presence. One by one, the civilizations of this planet gradually forgot their original state of oneness with the divine and opened themselves to the manipulating and controlling energies of the shadow. Incarnated beings of the black arts who had acquired great knowledge on other spheres of existence prior to coming to the earth became the black mag magicians of ancient times. They are the ones who genetically altered the sacred plants at their roots. By doing so, they exercised greater and greater control over people by dimming their spiritual powers and perceptions. This took place over a long period of time. The vibrational rate of the original plants was gradually destroyed or greatly reduced. The plants available today for recreational use carry a negatively altered vibration that is a far cry from the original ones. The youth and many adults on this planet are addicted to substances that take the to the lower levels of the astral plane. In the lower astral realm, users get hooked and courted by astral entities, needing their energies in order to survive. These are the major cause of addiction, and those indulging in these substances endlessly create these distorted energies in their emotional and subtle bodies. These entities exist with a consciousness of their own. They are real and alive, living in a low-energy consciousness that becomes more and more aggressive in its attempts to gain control over the user. Over time, with continued use, the entities grow in number and in power in the energetic field of their host. These low vibrational entities have so little light and energy of their own that they have to get hooked on willing human beings to produce cravings in the emotional body to survive. The cravings are the fundamental roots of addiction created by entities of the astral plane that suck your light and your energies whenever they can to assure their own survival. One can say that your addictions are also their fix. How so many types of levels of addiction are formed is not well understood. If it were, few of you would partake of addictive substance, substances, not even plain commercial cigarettes or alcohol. What you have left today is a handful of low vibration, conscious altering plants instead of lifting people in consciousness to realms of light in their multidimensional travels. The negative qualities of the plants you have today take their users into the lower vibrations of the astral plane where light is dim and consciousness distorted. The black magicians brilliantly altered the vibrations of the original plants to create a tearing effect in the soul and a greater separation from source. Recreational drug users are, for the most part, people who perceive consciously or unconsciously that they have lost a connection with their higher self. They are seeking a form of union at the emotional level with a greater part of themselves. Addiction arises from this natural desire of the soul, which can never be fulfilled by engaging in these kinds of activities. Drug users keep inhaling or ingesting more and more conscious-altering substances in a desperate attempt to reconnect with a part of themselves that would fill the void and emptiness they feel deep within themselves. Drug use illustrates an attempt to find externally the connection and the love that can only be found within the self through the love of self that beats through your heart. I repeat again, mind-altering Mind and soul altering substance, substances found on the surface can only amplify the void, emptiness, and loneliness of the soul who seeks fulfillment outside of the self. When one relies on a low vibration substance to create an altered state or to reconnect with the divine, the result is only greater illusion and self-deception. Do you understand that? The grasses that are grown and the chemical substances that are produced today for mind-altering purposes are totally unnatural to the soul, the physical body, the mind, and the emotional body. These substances create distortion in these bodies that can take a very long time to correct, even lifetimes. The original genetic state of sacred plants was love, innocence, and purity. Now there is a huge group consciousness of drug entities that are destructive to the very fabric of life and the consciousness itself. There is almost no place you can go free from the vibration of these entities. This is another plot of the Dark Brothers whose agenda is to stop or slow down the evolution of this entire generation. You find large groups of entities waiting for their willing prey clustered in areas where people gather to inhale or partake of these substances. If you could observe from our perspective, 
you would know without a doubt that anyone indulging, indulging in these substances invites legions of these entities in. They cling to and torture their host emotionally to incite more consumption. They are like hungry vampires competing for their fix. The addiction comes not so much from the plant itself but from the entities who attach themselves to those using the substances. This is the main cause of a torment of addiction. Aurelia, what do these entities look like? Adama, I'm going to describe these entities to you. They look like thick smoke that can be 6, 10, 12, or 20 feet long and shaped a bit like a snake. They grow larger as the energy wraps itself around the various bodies, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, of those who partake in these substances. It is mainly the emotional body that is affected as it gets imprinted with the constant cravings for more and more drugs by the astral entities who embody that vibration. And that's what I see on people too. Well, most of the time, addiction leads to personality changes and character damage. The soul becomes more and more disconnected from the purpose of its incarnation and from the real self. Those who spend their lifetime in this altered state may have to experience several more incarnations to return to the state they embodied before the drug use. They will most, almost certainly suffer a setback in their personal evolution. Some rationalize that their drug-induced high is actually a doorway to spiritual development, but we say that is embracing a great illusion. So can you be more specific about how each of the four bodies, emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual, as well as the auric field, are affected by drug use? On the emotional body, Adama, of your four bodies, the one most affected is the emotional body. The entities lure people into addiction by creating a sensation of starvation or craving for the addictive substance, primarily in the emotional body and in the solar plexus. It is well documented that those who take substances retard the growth and maturing of their emotional bodies. In general, they can remain quite unbalanced or immature emotionally for many years or even the remainder, remainder of their incarnation. When you see men or women in their 30s and 40s with the maturity of a 15 or 20 year old, you know there is something that has stunned their growth of their emotional body. The emotional body usually stops maturing at the age one starts ingesting these substances. Often you'll hear people say that someone is 43 years going on 16 in maturity. Do you get the picture? The emotional immaturity creates deficiencies in the character building of the drug user. Instead of developing the qualities of their divinity, the addiction causes many to resort to all sorts of manipulations, treachery, and distorted ways of acquiring money in order to get another fix. There are also those who are even kill or resort to prostitution to get funds to feed their addiction. Drug dependency often destroys or diminishes the qualities of the soul and the goals that the incarnation of the incarnation are not met. Everyone has a certain desire to evolve and become the divine being they are. This is your very nature, your birthright. Those who use drugs or similar addictive substances are looking outside of themselves for what can be found only within the depths of the soul. Drug abuse demonstrates an unwillingness to go through the normal channels of learning and the daily lessons of life that help you evolve. In all truthfulness, there is no external shortcuts to enlightenment. It is all within you. As the vibration on the planet increases, the youth of our world and the users of recreational drugs will have to make it a serious choice and commit their life to the evolution and the predetermined purposes of their incarnation. They will soon be faced with a choice to either awaken spiritually and, and get of pot or possibly leave their present incarnation and spend time in the astral plane with destructive energies they have flirted with. Basically, at some point, this is a choice we will all have to make if we wish to ride the wave of ascension and reunite with our divine selves. So on the mental body. In the mental body, drug users... Use affects the character and level of integrity. The motives for living become very distorted. Instead of living for the development and integration of noble purposes, life often becomes obsess an obsessive rat race for money to buy more of these substances. The user's mind becomes dulled and cloudy while existing in a kind of consciousness. Genetically, drug use can often create repercussions in the... in... Uh, the experience for two to three generations, what can manifest as various kinds of physical, emotional, and mental weaknesses. 
Children born into families who inherit such problems may be souls who are choosing to resolve unfinished karma from their own addictions in a past incarnation. So on the physical body, on the physical level, drugs and any addiction lower all the vibrations of the body. There are those who are genetic, genetically very strong and don't seem to be physically affected. For many, the brain and emotional body are most affected. Nevertheless, one must be aware that the person who indulges in recreational drugs for a long time and fails to fulfill their present life contract will most likely lose the privilege of a strong, healthy body in the next incarnation. And you all know how painful and agonizing this can be. You can never consciously or carelessly abuse your body in one incarnation and have the privilege of a healthy and strong body again in the next one. Divine law requires that if you are given a strong, healthy body and you misuse it, the karma returns the very next life. That is why you have children born with all sorts of health problems. You ever wonder why this is? What they did to deserve it? Well, on a human level, you can never judge because you don't know the whole story. Even if you were to look at the astrological or Akashic records, the human consciousness can only perceive a small portion of the whole picture. In general, People trapped in addictive tendencies tend not to feed their bodies what is needed to remain in balance and, and, in, and vital. These types of imbalances created in the body are not conducive to motivating addicts to change their ways. They're malnourished, to say the least. Not feeding your body properly and regularly is part of the self-hatred and denial syndromes of those engaging in addictions. This means that they do not value themselves as divine beings and do not value the opportunity for this life either. The body needs to be replenished several, several times a day with a natural and nutritious food that carries as much life por force as possible. Junk food diets in the form of fast food completely devoid of nutrients have been the main diet of the great majority of drug users. And, right, probably not for all people, right? There's a lot of things we can look at in this. So then on the etheric body, etherically, drugs tear down much of the protective sheaths of the soul, known as subtle bodies. It can take a person who has indulged in one lifetime in the constant use of marijuana, LSD, or other recreational drugs three to five lifetimes or longer to return to balance. Addictions can call, cause tremendous damage to the etheric bodies. From a physical perspective, it is never obvious how much the non-visible bodies have been harmed. We're not talking about someone who has simply tried drugs as an experiment a few times and never continued. That will not hurt you deeply. We're talking about regular use over a long period of time. Many of you have been using drugs for five to ten years or longer. At this time, because of the great grace being offered to humanity, there's still time to let go of all the addictions and being a spiritual, emotional, and physical cleansing by divine grace. All can receive great healing. However, if the soul leaves this incarnation before healing takes place, many may take that damage into the next incarnation without full awareness of why the problems manifest in their physical bodies. So how is the auric field affected? From our perspective, when we look at a person who is a child of love, light, and innocence, the auric field demonstrates a beautiful emanation of all the colors of love, the seven rainbow rays, and golden light. It radiates out in different intensities of tone, and the auric field shows a geometric pattern of colors of high vibration. It is so because it is it is so because the beautiful colors of God have their counterparts in the full spectrum of the rainbow. When you look at the auric field of a user of marijuana or other drugs, you see very distorted patterns of the red tone of anger and vile green tones not representing harmony and love. There are also a lot of black and brown splashy spots all around the aura. More often than not, the beautiful original geometric auric pattern can no longer be seen. It is muddy in tone as the colors are very distorted. You would also see clusters of entities like coiling serpents of smoke wrapping themselves around parts of the body. The solar plexus and the heart become congested with these entities and their low frequency energy. The etheric body and auric field of users of recreational drugs are not a pretty sight. If we could show drug users their auric field compared to one we described above, they would be shocked. It might quit drugs, drug use on the spot. Oh. Next question is, our DNA is now mutating back to its original strand, 12 strand, strand light body as the earth prepares to go into her ascension frequency. How does this new stage of human evolution affect people who are using these drugs? Unfortunately, they are not mutating in a positive way. The main factor in cellular 
mutation is the love vibration and the effort the person puts into raising their vibration. How do you expect to raise your vibration while you are creating, feeding, maintaining, and entertaining legions of negative entities? Drug users constantly lower their vibration in order to feed these entities, which when one thinks about it, is really an act of self-hatred. The low vibration that users maintain is not conducive to increasing their love and light frequencies, thus inhibiting the mutation of their DNA into a higher state of evolution. Your sustained love and light is the uh, amounts is the determining factor in your DNA's automatic activation. The natural process has little to do with paying someone to do DNA activations, which are often ceremonies of intention. Unless the love and light frequency is increased and maintained by the receiver, not much can be accomplished. The activation of your light body is determined and accelerated by the amount of love and light you are able to maintain on a day-to-day -day basis. This includes love of self, the love of your body, and the love of your incarnation's purpose. Does the illegal status of marijuana in certain places affect its vibration? For example, is there a fear consciousness associated with its illegality okay yes definitely marijuana the plant itself possesses some positive applications if and when properly utilized it is a question of letting go of fear and addiction and putting each thing in its right perspective marijuana is a variety of the hemp plant your authorities have made it illegal out of fear the hemp plant could be used in many positive ways for the benefit of mankind instead it is used in negative ways in attempt to repress and regress the soul evolution of an entire generation the fact that it is illegal creates a greater interest or special attraction for the youth and many adults its illegal status creates Fear and feeds the fear consciousness entities within the self. For many who live with fear issues in their unconscious, doing something fearful stimulates the energy of the fear entities within the self, creating the false illusion of mental and emotional thrill. Understanding that drug entities are fed by the vibration of altered plants and fear entities are fed by fear energy. Being in fear and creating the fear vibration has become a form of addiction for many people. Why do you think so many people enjoy horror films or violent movies? Why are these types of attractions so popular? The emotions created by watching these scenes feed the fear entities that run the internal programming of those watching and enjoying the simulating sensations. Those who have not made peace with their heart and their divine presence have not yet understood the true meaning of love and peace. On this planet, the great majority of people are programmed to be emotionally activated by fear. This is part of an old, old program that needs to be released by everyone committed to enlightenment. In the new consciousness and evolution humanity and the planet are traveling toward, there is no room for such vibrations. These still choosing to care, those still choosing to carry these vibrations will be held back and denied entrance until their lessons are learned. The fifth dimensional consciousness will not accept this kind of baggage from anyone. Making drugs illegal doesn't resolve the problem. Those determined to use drugs will find a way of doing so. The way recreational drugs are marketed and the fact that they are illegal encourages them to be deceitful and dishonest with themselves and others. That is not said to criticize or judge the authorities. They tackle the drug problem best to their ability. Drug users become secretive and suspicious and live a double life. The behavior is certainly not conducive to building the human personality and character needed for ascension and evolution into higher consciousness. The child of light, the child of love, and innocence cannot find anything to hide. Life on this planet is moving toward the consciousness of total knowingness and openness, where everything will be known and nothing will be hidden. Do you know that in the higher realms no one can hide anything because everything can be seen and known at all times through the aura, uh, your tone, your vibration, and the colors you radiate? You can see everything in the auric field of all people on earth we choose to gaze upon, as well as in our own community of light. Very soon, there will be no more secrets anywhere on this planet. Come on, my friends, children of my heart, do you really think you can hide your secrecy? Well, the truth is, you cannot. Perhaps you can hide some things for a while from your other fellow humans, but you simply cannot hide any secrets, thoughts, feelings, or intentions from any one of us in the light realm, anywhere above the the third dimensional consciousness and just to digress really quick and how true this is, anyone who I meet who is above um operating above this third consciousness we're able to telepathically communicate and and in that realm and seeing each other just 
your soul self and the personalities for truly what they are. Um, I'm, I'm already seeing so much truth in that and how there is nothing hidden within that. Even the trees, the nature spirits, and the animals can easily read your heart, your intentions, your past, and your future. If you were telepathic, or if they could speak to you in a language you understood, you would be quite surprised at their wisdom and knowledge. They will soon change for most of you as you evolve. As humanity opens its heart to un unconditional love and acceptance of others, this type of communication with all life, which all beings of enlightened, civ enlightened civilizations enjoy presently, will open up for you as well, and you enjoy you will enjoy this new magic tremendously. Never will you be afraid of anything anymore. You will know that peace has always been there beneath your fears. My words may appear harsh or exaggerated for some of you, but believe me, all I have described has become a reality for too many precious souls. Not all those enjoying marijuana will experience every symptom I have described. I have tried to show you the path that drug use leads to when alignment with the incarnation's truth purpose continues to be ignored. Next question. Is there anything people can do to heal themselves from the abuse of marijuana or similar types of substances? What healing tools can you recommend? Well, sweet one, we wish we had a magic potion or miracle solution. Vibrational healing tools are emerging that will be a significant use to healers and counselors in the coming years. These devices, which some of which are already in limited use, accelerate the clearing and rebuilding of the etheric body in the hands of a practitioner who is aligned with the divine. They will greatly assist all those who desire to process and purify old distorted energies. They will also provide great assistance to the children incarnating now who are experiencing tremendous stress in your surface societies. These children are not only relying on mind-altering substances that are illegal, but being fed su such substances by doctors under the guise of treatment for ADD symptoms and other mental diseases. It is unfortunate to witness in so many countries the dark forces have swayed children born as indigo and or violet souls into addiction to these habit-forming substances. This sinister plan is designed to bind their souls and stop the wondrous contribution and wisdom they are meant to bring to this planet. This is a trap too much of our youth of this world is falling into. Nearly all those precious souls come here at a time of Earth's transition with mighty goals and mighty missions. We know that a great percentage of these precious children will awaken in time. However, for those who do not, the drug abuse and addiction will mark a major setback in their evolution. The right information and knowledge of truth can begin to make a great difference. Unfortunately, peer pressure has played a very negative role in your society. It is the giving up of one's power and values to avoid appearing different or to feel accepted by others. I say to you, dare to be different. It is a sign of maturity and sovereignty. Know that there is no one as effective as a drug ex-drug user in convincing others to stay clean. Without a doubt, the time has come for incarnated souls to face the choice of getting off pot or leaving their present incarnation for a less evolved sphere of evolution where they can continue to learn their lessons. We hope that many, when faced with the final choice, will make the right choice. We realize, however, that you live in a society evolving on a planet of free choice where people are meant to experience experience and experiment freely. Remember that all choices you make from day to day and the intentions you hold in your heart and mind have significant consequences for you now and for your future. We ask you to pray for those precious children for grace and divine intervention. We ask for those who will be reading this material to unfold the youth of the world in a whirlwind of love, of blue and violet flame for their protection. We ask that you petition the archangels for their protection. These spiritual tools are very, very important. If you know someone using drugs or teachers open to concepts of higher consciousness, give them this information or communicate what you feel they will understand. Share your wisdom with them. Information and knowledge are some of the best tools to transform consciousness. You may not interfere with anyone's free will, but you may offer someone the gift of knowledge. It will allow that person to make an enlightened choice, perhaps the first time. People falsely believe they are on a high spiritual path by taking drugs. Those who think they are on a high spiritual path by taking drugs because they experience an altered state, do not realize that these experiences take them to lower levels of astral planes. What they experience is a far cry from the joy and ecstasy of the etheric planes. 
the dwelling place of higher consciousness there is a distinct difference between the astral and the realms of light the etheric plane be begin begins to be experienced to some extent at the higher levels of the fourth dimension and then much more fully in the fifth dimension beyond the astral plane is rightly called the plane of duality relativity and spiritual unconsciousness where there is little or no light that is all that one perceives is distorted and fragmented compared to the realms of light in the astral plane truth and divinity are no longer understood it is also considered a giant pool for all the unfulfilled desires and negative emotions of mankind that have been created in separation from god Consider it a place of great illusion. More often than not, it creates the illusion of a world containing beauty and pleasure that seduces souls away from their intended soul path. It projects all the deceptions of the human consciousness at times very well camouflaged and creates the appearance of something better than it actually is. The astral plane is always devious, distorted, alluring, and deceitful. The astral plane is compromised of different levels, from the highest level to the lowest, which some of you refer to as the bottom of the pit, until the astral plane is clear of human negativity, the vibrations will prevent anyone from reaching the etheric planes. Thus, drug use can never bring on the experience of light unless the right sub substances carrying the right vibrations are used appropriately in your present world. Children, my heart, the former sacred plants are either very rare or extinct. The younger children of this generation are very brilliant and psychic. They know when they are told the truth and they know when they are deceived. They are born with higher levels of perception than most presently incarnated. Many of them who read our information will be able to recognize the truth of it and embrace it fully. Unfortunately, only some enlightened writings about the spiritual consequences of drug abuse have been published, but most of this information has eluded you or it been suppressed. The children of the world, young and old, need this information please spread the word it is of utmost importance many parents are not well prepared for their parenting roles and thus are too complacent with their children often they are too busy with their daily demands of their lives children in general do not receive the spiritual wisdom they need from their parents to grow as mature as divine beings in the physical realm parents are responsible for teaching their children the true spiritual values accurate teachings of true wisdom have been destroyed on this planet this is why so much new information is pouring in from other dimensions and star systems as well as from the earth and her kingdoms in order to assist humanity in finding its way back to the source and oneness those who destroyed the library of alexandria in the early time of christianity played an important role in keeping humanity in ignorance this library contained over 400,000 books holding much of the wisdom accumulated over eons of time and and kept in sacredness to enlighten humanity after this beautiful library was burned to the ground humanity began to experience a dark age that lasted for many centuries those who orchestrated the destruction of such a precious collection of spiritual wisdom and knowledge for the planet were very proud and happy with themselves at first in their thirst for power and control they convinced themselves that they had performed an act of mercy for humanity they sought to dim the light on the planet by depriving mankind of all the very teachings that would show the way to a life of love and grace and salvation of their souls the destruction of those precious precious records created an enormous loss and set the evolution of the planet back those responsible for the obliteration of such treasures were instruments of the sinister forces. To this day, they are reaping the karma of their actions. Please comment on the effects of drug use on the chakras. Are they blown open when drugs are used? This is not exactly what happens. Actually, the chakras close to the light as they are being ripped apart. Prolonged drug use gradually creates weakened and tearing or misalignment of the chakra system. The chakras can no longer carry as much light and begin to imprint with negativity. This is why I mentioned that as many as 5 to 10 lifetimes can be required to heal the imbalances. When the chakra system becomes imprinted with great negativity from the astral plane, the light dims, the healing forces are no longer present in the chakras. The soul involved is born with severe physical and emotional imbalances in the next few incarnations. With right action, self-love, and willingness to improve oneself, with each succeeding incarnation, the light begins to rebuild the chakras, and healing will eventually take place. The soul will find its way back to where it started in its evolution. It is like taking many steps backwards and then returning to your original starting place, a rather unnecessary and avoidable delay. 
a soul is not accorded the same level of grace in the next incarnation when they chose to forsake their purpose and destiny to indulge in a type of addiction especially a soul born with as much light as children of today for several lifetimes these souls will experience life without the support of the beautiful light they now carry until they learn their lessons that is why it has been said that souls engaging in drug use are embarking on a painful journey for many lifetimes to come adma this is a time of great grace for everyone on earth what opportunities are there for people who turn away from this type of distortion and and desire to move into the light more rapidly addiction and drug use were created on your planet as a plot of dark forces they are determined more than ever to stop the expansion of the light and to prevent as many souls as possible from making it easily to the ascension door in this life the precious children could make it so easily and painlessly they were born with the tools they need to attain their enlightenment and spiritual freedom with much ease and grace so many of the children addicted to drugs now need unprecedented assistance from enlightened adults who have the wisdom to understand that a whole generation of enlightened beings is at stake here the new energy that floods the earth will not support the dark consciousness the children will be granted an opportunity to a period of grace to align and heal completely so that they can come into the new world together with the rest of humanity however the children need to understand that they are responsible for making the ultimate choice for themselves no one can make it for them those who choose to leave will become aware when they cross to the other side of the veil they will have forsaken a wondrous opportunity knowledge my sweet ones knowledge and understanding are the greatest tools at this time offering these gifts to those who have not had the opportunity to receive the wisdom from those involved in their upbringing is indeed a great act of love and compassion do you have some of the original sacred plants in telos and do you use them in telos many of the original plants have been preserved and yes we have plants that can assist spiritual development we don't smoke them of course we do not need them our present level of spiritual consciousness far exceeds any benefit these plants could offer us we cultivate them for their beauty and grace as we do so many other species don't forget these plants have graduated to become fifth dimensional species at some point in our future we might consider assisting some of you with the openings through the right use of one or two plants we have preserved be assured that it will not be used with many they will not be for sale in your markets either nor available to those who have now indulge in the use of altered counterparts you grow it is certainly said that a whole generation is being swelled up by the drug this drug consciousness be aware that it is the ultimate plan of the dark forces to wipe out this generation spiritually and enslave them if possible you will allow this to happen or you will wake up to the truth of who you are and why you are here marijuana is also used for medical purposes does it matter how it's being used does it always create damage Medical use and recreational use of marijuana are not the same thing. People in hospitals in severe pain take sedatives such as morphine, which are other types of substances that stop or reduce pain. These substances are habit-forming, mind-altering, and lowering the body's vibration to that of the astral plane. Marijuana used for a short time as a medical prescription for pain, let's say after surgery, is not going to have the damage I have described. However, many years of an unnecessary drug use chosen as a way of life to avoid lessons, responsibility, and challenges chosen for the incarnation can create spiritual consequences. There are those who have been on drugs for many, many years and have been able to stop and now are healing themselves. Much grace is granted to them now as it evolves every incarnated soul has to eventually learn how to heal itself this is part of the mastery curriculum you have come here to complete many souls have made the choice to leave their embodiment in the next few years without having any clue about healing themselves they will most likely go to another planet to continue their evolution and stay there until they learn to heal all of their imbalances there are several other planets now willing to host these souls where they will be taught in a different way what they did not learn here they have eternity to evolve as they wish their free choice is always honored can you comment on how they will heal themselves there are some who have given up their addiction cold turkey with a firm will and determination to heal themselves they are receiving much grace and assistance from above it is important for them to invoke the healing light of their soul and reconnect with the eternal self as the great i am on a daily basis going back to a healthy and natural diet will help keep them in balance and greatly ease the process 
active meditation, and the use of the seven sacred healing flames will bring great mercy and grace to their life stream. At this time, grace on this planet is distributed in an extraordinary way to anyone who is sincerely and wholeheartedly committed to healing themselves at all levels of their being. Once a person who has been a drug user for many, many years makes a firm commitment to life and remains clean, the angels of divine grace are at their side assisting. On earth at this time, you are literally running out of time. The question you need to ask yourself is, do I really want to extend my third dimension? Third dimensional challenges and lessons for another 10 or more lifetimes somewhere else, living in pain and separation from my true self? Do I want to wait for the next round of ascension, perhaps in 10,000 years on another planet? Or do I want to ascend now with Earth and the rest of humanity to experience the glory of spiritual freedom and joy that will change my life forever? What about those who are not inhaling? Those who do not inhale this energy through their lungs but choose to keep company of those engaging in drug use can experience, through this association, lowering of their own vibration. You have been facing your shadow so he says, you're, you're really, uh, you have been facing your shadow side. You have invested much effort in your own healing, and you know how difficult and strenuous, strenuous it has been. You have worked hard to heal your issues and imbalances, and you know the difficulties you have encountered. Your emotional baggage was less than most. You are increasing your vibration in a wondrous way. You're opening your heart, and your strands of DNA are evolving because your intention is pure and focused. What does this tell you about the kind of self-healing work to be required of those who choose to remain in complete denial of what is required of them to fulfill the purpose of their present incarnation. Eurelia, can you comment on the importance of being in divine alignment for the current ascension cycle as we are entering and the effects of the use of marijuana on alignment with the I am? Adama, those believing that they will open up faster or make spiritual, greater spiritual progress with the assistance of drug use entertain total illusion. There are those who have had partial third eye openings with the use of drugs. This is not true clairvoyance, acquired through the dis discipline of the soul on the path of ascension and enlightenment. There are no shortcuts, dear sister. Everyone, without exception, has to accomplish their spiritual homework in the vibrations of love and light and clear all emotional issues and karmic baggage. Those who have opened their psychic perceptions through drug use may have to accept a closing down of these faculties. Such openings not in alignment with true clairvoyance but of low vibrations cannot be sustained. All legitimate openings must come about through the grace of the divine self when you are ready or when it is your part of your preordained pathway. Let me share that almost 50% of people who have developed clairvoyant abilities do not own these gifts by divine appointment. For many, these skills create greater separation and illusion. I ask of all of you reading this material to be careful to use your discernment. Do not be deceived by that trap. When external means to reach spiritual alignment are relied upon, rest assured that a shadow of real truth is created, not, spiral, spirit, not true spiritual brilliancy. Aurelia, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Adama, if it were not for the intervention in the and the glorious and beautiful new light so generously flooding on your planet now from our Creator, the Earth and humanity would soon be facing a different scenario. Your present generation could be wiped out spiritually, and the Earth would again experience so much destruction and a major setback from her ultimate destiny. This is why there is so much new channeled information being dis disseminated. Much is on the Internet, and many are willing and dedicated light workers share free information from the heart to assist others. There are still those who believe that everyone will send no questions asked with all their human baggage unresolved. Allow me to say that this will certainly not be the case. It is true that everyone eventually will ascend, but it may not be in this lifetime or from this planet. The important message right now for those youth of the world and those not so young in age as well, I repeat once more, get off the fence or you may have to get off the planet. The time for complaint. Oh my gosh. Complacency <laughs> is now over. Easy for me to say. Oh, almost done here. Accountability cannot be escaped for those forsaking their destiny, tearing their chakras and diminishing their health and their beautiful light through drug use and other addictive substances, alcohol, cigarettes, etc. 
There is still time right now to heal yourself if you choose. Divine grace is now available through a most magnificent window of opportunity. The essence of what we all seek is divine love and freedom from pain and suffering. The path to wholeness is much easier when you use self-love as your companion. Thank you for your concern and for your love. It was my great pleasure to commune with you this day. I love you all so very much. I am Adama, offering you my love, comfort, and support. Well, if you made it this part, this far, I thank you for listening and wishing you the highest and best in your path and journey.